Welcome to our Bible teaching on 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 14. We're in a section, verses 13 to 20. And I've put over that the heading, Pray for Understanding. In the last recording, we looked at verse 13 down to verse number 15. So we're going to read 16 to 20 today. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. This is part, of course, this chapter that is teaching how we should, um, or should I say in the early church, there was a very great focus on these miraculous gifts, the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues. And of course this chapter is written to regulate how they were used. So you cannot use this chapter, as we've said many times, you cannot use this chapter to prove or disprove prove whether tongues and prophecy is with us today, but this chapter is to teach us how to regulate the use of those gifts in the early church. But what we can do from a chapter like this is pick up principles that help us um, understand how we should effectively use gifts today in the local church. Now we've dealt with verses 13 down to 15 and really we were learning there about the requirement to interpret what someone said if they were speaking in tongues which is a foreign language. And we're talking about praying with the understanding, singing with the understanding as opposed to just praying or singing in your spirit. So there was some benefit to the individual, but actually there was no benefit to their mind, to their understanding. It was a kind of a spiritual blessing in some sense of the word. So then you come to verse 16 and the Spirit of God teaches us, Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks? This raises a question, who is the unlearned? Well, as you go through this chapter, there are three groups. There are believers, there are unbelievers, and there are unlearned. And I would suggest that I think the unlearned is someone who is a believer, but they're not yet fully instructed or mature. And so they don't fully understand what is going on in the gatherings of God's people. So a, a, a young Christian or a new Christian or someone who has not yet understood what is happening in church gatherings. Now, in verse 23, you have an unbeliever and an unlearned person described together. So they can't be the same people because they're two different people in verse 23. It says, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you're mad? So we see a distinction there between those who are unbelievers, so they're not saved, and those who are believers, but they're not yet fully aware of what's happening or, or well taught in the things of God. So it would be people who are uninformed and they don't understand. So what he's saying is if you don't have an interpreter, if you don't understand, well then the person who comes in, who has takes the place of being a Christian but not yet fully understanding the things of God, how will they be able to say amen when you give thanks? Now there's another good principle. We should say amen when someone prays. And when someone thanks God for his son and for the things of God, and well, that's, remember, that's an important thing. So when the church gathers, we should be able to audibly say amen. So we should understand it. We should appreciate it. And the person couldn't do that because they didn't understand. So he says in verse 17, for you give thanks, but the other is not edified. So giving of thanks is in public gatherings is not about you. It's about God's people being edified through your prayers as well as through your preaching. So if, if it's not interpreted, if it's this language that is unintelligible, well, how can that person then not only give thanks or say amen at the giving of thanks, but he's not built up, he's not edified. So there's a principle that we're restating as we go through this passage, the believer should be edified through the prayers of God's people, the singing of hymns, as well as the teaching of the word. Now Paul says in verse 18, I thank God that I speak, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church I'd rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousand in an unknown tongue. So Paul's saying tongues is not this sign of spiritual um, uh, 
spiritual maturity. It's not the sign of being a highly um, spiritual person, someone that's a super saint. No, no, he says, I'd rather speak five words you understand than 10,000 in a tongue. Now, he's using exaggeration here to, to make a point, but he's making the point five intelligible words are far more important than 10,000 words that you don't understand. So he comes to the final point in verse 20, and he says in verse 20, listen, I want you to understand this. Be not children in understanding. So don't be babies in understanding. But in malice, so in evil things be immature, so don't develop your ability to do evil things, but in understanding be mature. This is a really important principle, that the believer should be a person who is very, very immature when it comes to evil things. Shouldn't be sly and cunning and slick and underhand, but you should be very mature when it comes to understanding, as be men, in understanding. Now there's another really important principle. There must be a benefit for God's people both in the prayers, the singing and in the teaching or preaching of God's word. When it comes to sinful things, deceitful things, malicious things, just be very very unintelligent in those things. Don't have a developed mind when it comes to subtlety and malice and evil, but be very mature when it comes to spiritual things, things of God, understanding the things of God. Now we'll move to the next section next time, but I hope that as we continue through this chapter, we're not only learning about what the truth meant in the days of the Corinthian church and the early church, but we're learning what the truth, how it can be applied to us in our day. And I pray that it might be beneficial, it might be edifying, it might be exhorting, it might stir you up in your faith and that you might be encouraged through the teaching of Scripture today. Thanks again for your attention. I really, really do appreciate it.